everybody welcome to down home backyard gardening i want to do a part two to the video that i did last week about pests i've come up with six other common garden pests some i've actually dealt with here in this garden myself and one bonus tip on a critter i hadn't even thought about because i don't have to deal with them but a subscriber asked me i did a little research i gave her some advice and i thought i'd share it with everybody here so as always let's grow Okay, I thought I'd start this video with a with an insect I've never had to deal with so far, and those are white flies. Now, if you get them, you kind of know you have them, even if you don't see them right away, because they'll usually hang out on the bottom of a leaf, and they multiply like crazy, crazy amount of numbers. And most of the time when you walk by, you'll kind of brush something, or if you're moving stuff around in your garden, you'll you'll bump a plant, and then this cloud of white little bugs just start flying everywhere. Those are white flies. And what they're doing is they're sucking the sap out of the bottom or the juices out of the bottom of the leaf, which obviously will kill a plant, kill a leaf, kill a plant, so forth and so on. You can use neem oil on these guys if you want to. My thing with neem oil, and I'll just put this out right now, is I don't mind using it and I have used it. Now last year in 2023, I didn't use it at all, not one time. It's set over in that corner the whole year. In fact, it's still sitting there, <laughs> honestly. I didn't move it, that way I know where it is. Neem oil is good for certain pests, but you have to remember it will also kill or affect the beneficials, like honeybees. So if you're going to use it, use it late in the evening when the bees, the most beneficials are pretty much done, or spot, spot use it in the mornings or when you see issues that you need to address with neem oil. I have learned last year that by companion planting, I literally, like I just said, did not have to use neem oil at all. But if you use it, just be careful because it can kill your beneficials. And that's obviously not what we want. The insect predator that you want to attract to your garden to kill white flies is the damsel bug. Don't get it confused with the assassin bug. They do kind of look alike, but they are different. And to attract the damsel bug, plant thyme and lavender. Both of those plants are a low growing plant. It gives the bug plenty of places to hide for it to come out and take care of business. So again, lavender and thyme. Spider mites. I have been hit with these twice that I can think of. And one was really bad the beginning of last year on a tomatillo plant that was growing for volunteer. The thing was huge. I came out and I was like, man, there's spiders all over this thing. Like I've got a spider web all over it. It seemed like it popped up overnight. Well, those weren't spiders or a spider. They were spider mites, these little tiny guys that just attack the underside of your leaves and again, drain the plant of all its juice. You will literally know you have these guys when there is a webbing all over your plant and you can't see a spider. It literally looks like a spider's web, hence spider mite, all over your plant. Now, the way you would deal with this is again, neem oil. You neem oil the living snot out of it every three days until the spider mites are gone. Now, I, with my case, I had to actually get rid of that tomatillo plant. It was so bad. The leaves were all yellow and just, those things killed that plant in really no time. I didn't catch it in time and those things got me bad on that tomatillo plant. But you know, it is what it is. It's gardening, you can't catch everything. But neem oil is really about the only way you can really effectively quickly get rid of them or the organic way and the slower way just keeping it real you want to attract the natural predator to spider mites is the big eyed bug or big eyed bugs there's different varieties of them and how you attract those is by planting crimson clover now you have to be careful with crimson clover once it starts to flower it can become a weed and really take over everything so you got to be real careful if you're going to plant crimson clover it's a great natural nitrogen fixation kind of a plant it puts a lot of nitrogen into the ground through its roots uh, but again you got to be careful with crimson clover just keeping it real but that is what you want to plant in order to attract the natural predator to spider mites which is a big eyed bug okay y'all i know this is a, a video about you know garden pests and everything but i have to show this all right <laughs> i have to. first marigolds of the year look at how beautiful that is Ugh. Lots of basil. Right there is thyme. I'm actually practicing what I preach. Everything I talk about is out here in this garden. In fact, I have dill 
right there. Deal right oh, there. Yes. Everything I talk about, I am actually doing in this garden. And another one. All of that is sweet alyssum. Which if you all watch the other video, you know everything I just showed are crops that you want in your plant to attract a multitude of different <laughs> beneficial insects to help just get rid of and keep away and kill the bad pests. So there we go. Let's talk about leaf footed bugs. I get these guys a lot here. And the only thing I've ever really been able to do is just catch them and give them a loving, warm, soapy bath to die in. <laughs> or I, I take care of them in a much more direct way. But I didn't really know if there is anything you can do to really get rid of these guys. Now, once they kick in and once they're in your garden, you have to stay alert. Once they start breeding, their offspring can be everywhere. And you'll know what they are because they're these little teeny tiny bugs that I'm putting up right here and they stay in groups. Now this is the difference between a leaf-footed baby nymph or the assassin bug babies. They look almost identical, but how you know the difference is the assassin bug ba babies are always by themselves. They will not be in groups because they are an isolated predator. They don't hunt in groups and they don't grow up in groups. The leaf-footed babies will stay in groups of eight to 12, however many they are. And you'll know they're there because they're the, you can't miss them. They're really easy to get rid of though. I always just uh, put a glove on and give them a loving embrace with my hand. That's how I get rid of those. The only thing I've really found that kills these guys is a chemical called Promethean. I think I said that right. I'll put, the, I'll put it up right here on the screen. Just be really careful, everyone, when using chemicals because you take the chance, again, of killing beneficials. So all my research on this insect, I didn't really find anything that you can plant to bring in a natural predator. I'm sure they're out there being a natural predator, but uh, if you see them, they're really easy to identify because they have a leaf-like structure on the back of both of their hind legs. Very easy. And what they do is they take a straw, they have a straw, they stick into a tomato basically, and then just start sucking the juice out and making the tomato look horrible. Little holes all over it. You don't want them. Kind of like a squash bug does. You just, you don't want them. Find them, kill them. Kill them, kill them. You do not want them. And you'll, you'll notice them really easy. Trust me. <laughs> All right, cabbage worms. Now, I have not had to deal with these guys because I cannot grow brassicas. I tried for two years. Nothing for me will grow as far as a brassica. I mean, it'll grow, but they won't really do anything. So I stopped last year. I didn't even try. It was, I just gave up, honestly. If you are in a zone where, or a climate where you can grow brassicas, I'm sure. I'm sure you've had to deal with cabbage worms. And if you have, I'm so sorry. But what you wanna do is as soon as you see them, you start picking them off with your hands, feed them to your chickens, give them a warm, loving, soapy bath grave, whatever you would need to do, but get rid of them. Hand pick them if you have to, but once you start to get them, you start to get them. So if you're going to plant brassicas, and they don't only attack brassicas, but you plant a lot of brassicas, these are the crops that you want to plant around and all through your brassicas to bring in parasitic wasps, our, our buddies, the parasitic wasps, because they will do exactly what the wasps do for all worms. They will lay their eggs on the cabbage worm. Those eggs will hatch and those larvae will go into the cabbage worm and eat that thing from the inside out. Now again, nature is cruel but also awesome and very effective. Companion plants for brassicas to help confuse the butterfly moth that lays the eggs for cabbage worms are celery, carrots, and beets. Grow those around your brassicas and they will confuse that moth to lay their eggs somewhere else. Now, if you want to bring in the parasitic wasps to attack the cabbage worms, sweet alyssum. Sweet alyssum, dill, Anything that I have said in the past that will bring in parasitic wasps, that's what you want to plant all around your brassicas. And as I just showed, the sweet alyssum grows really low to the ground. It has a very shallow root system, so it will not affect or interfere with your other crops. And that is what's beautiful about that, that crop. Now, it can get out of hand if you don't keep it in check, but you can just pull them out, transplant that's what I've done I've transplanted sweet alyssum actually yesterday 
all around the garden just to start pushing my zone of protection everywhere instead of just in one spot. But sweet alyssum will bring in the parasitic wasps that will help kill and maintain and manage a cabbage worm problem. But stay vigilant and if you see them, see them, just get rid of them any way that you can. Trust me. The Colorado potato beetle. Now I can flat out say I have never had those here. Uh, I don't ever want to see them and I don't know if that's just because of where I live or what but if you all do have this issue with these little beetles here's what you need to do in order to help maintain and get rid of them as quickly as possible. So just like with the white flies you want to plant lavender and thyme to bring in for this bug the assassin bug. Now this beast right here will kill pretty much anything it gets near and it will bite you if you attack it it will sting you i have actually heard of people getting stung by this and it's a very painful sting when i now, see them i leave them alone i give them a wide berth i just let them do their thing kill everything that can kill in the garden to help me and move on um, but i do have them out here uh, maybe not right now because it's still early but i will throughout the year but you want to plant thyme and lavender to bring them in. Now I know the name is potato beetle but they will attack any of the nightshade family so potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. Those are the nightshade families and they will attack all of them. So if you get them again hand pick them, put them in a soapy bath, let them die. You can also use BT again if you want to. I choose not to go chemicals. I, I try to do everything organic or I'm looking and when I see a pest, I immediately attack it and I get rid of it as quickly as I can. Um, I think that's incredibly important as being a gardener is you're always in your garden and you're always out here looking and inspecting and admiring nature, but you have to be looking for those pests because they are there and you want to catch them early. So again, grow lavender and thyme. Get it around your garden. Make sure you have a good force field around your garden to keep all these pests out as many as you can at least <laughs> okay the last one I want to talk about is something I get hit with every single year I have not been able to get rid of these guys and I even have every companion plant that I'm about to list growing out here literally right now and these guys still come so when they show up you just got to deal with them harshly and effectively with no mercy and those are army worms these guys are punks, straight up punks, and they will destroy a tomato in no time. If they get on your tomato, they will start chewing and destroying, like immediately. Hate them with a passion, but army worms. And here's what you need to plant in order to bring in the parasitic wasps to kill these guys. Again, it's all pretty much the same types of crops that you wanna plant, but I'll go down this list. Right. Sweet alyssum, marigolds, dill, fennel and yarrow. Now you want to let all of those go to flower and those will of course bring in all of our buddies the parasitic wasps and they will do the same thing that they do to any of the other cab any of the other worms. They will lay their eggs on them and uh, nature will do its thing brutally and effectively but it takes time. When you have a huge crop of tomatoes you have to be very vigilant for this guy. He's very easy to see. They're, they're very easy to identify. They're dark brown got a stripe usually and they'll be chewing and munching and just destroying your tomatoes so when you see them kill them kill them kill them with no hesitation kill them I'm, I'm telling you right now kill them but plant those other crops to bring in those wasps to do their thing and uh, hopefully you won't have to get to the stage of them destroying stuff now, now those crops that I just mentioned will also bring in lace flies and ladybugs and both of those will eat the larva of the army worm. So hopefully if you have enough ladybugs and enough lace wings flying all around your garden, they're also attacking the larva stages of this worm, along with all the other stuff that they eat, like aphids and stuff. But you want to ensure that you are incredible. I can't say this enough, y'all. Army worms, when, when they hit, they hit. You have you to be have. very, very vigilant on these guys and get rid of them. I know I'm beating a dead horse, but I'm not joking. You've got to get rid of them quickly. I hate them. All right, everyone, so that's part two of this video series. I wasn't even planning on doing another one, 
but I did realize after reading all the comments and everything that these are a very this was a very beneficial topic for everyone. I'm I feel very blessed that everyone's watching the video, giving me such good feedback. So I did want to do a part two to cover some other insects that I just didn't cover in the first one. And the bonus tip. Now I was asked from a viewer about squirrels and I've never had to deal with them since I started gardening. It's because of where I live. Um, this is like a new construction area ish. And we used to have squirrels until all the houses went up behind. Cause when I moved in here, none of these houses were here. And now they're all here. <laughs> and I used to have squirrels that I'd feed, but I didn't have a garden at all. Like at all. This backyard was just a backyard. Didn't even have things, didn't even have stuff in the corners. Like literally this was just a backyard. But once that house went up right there, we no longer had squirrels. So I didn't have to worry about squirrels anymore. And I've never had to worry about them in the garden. Again, I'm saying this and I'll have a troop of squirrels tomorrow. I'll be so mad. But I did some research for this viewer and what I found is you want to use a combination of cayenne pepper because they hate the capsaicin in pepper. They can't handle it. And a mixture of ground cinnamon. Put a, a good healthy amount of both of those in a water bottle, fill it up with water, and everywhere that you see the squirrels, whether they're coming in on a fence line in one specific area, spray and soak the snot out of that area with that combination. If they're attacking a certain crop or a certain area of your garden, spray that entire area with that, that mixture. And from everything I read, that will keep them away because they don't like the smell. So that's the organic way that I've been able to find to keep squirrels out. I also have owls up, these fake owls. Uh, the key with those, and the same thing with birds that fly around and attack stuff, is you gotta move those owls around. Critters are smart, birds are very smart. They will notice if the owls never move and they'll be like, okay, well that's nothing. So if you move the owls around, if you have them, it will confuse the birds and it will also help the squirrel issue. It'll freak them out and they'll more than likely not be around. Now, of course I'm gonna to get told, hey, this never works. I've actually seen it work for me, but I religiously move those owls around especially when the tomatoes are growing, 100%. Um, I'll actually put extra stakes out in the yard specifically to move the owls around. But again, for squirrels, that combination, spray it everywhere that you see them, and hopefully they'll just stay away. That's the research I found for squirrels. If you all deal with squirrels and you have a different method of dealing with them in a humane way that you can post on here, <laughs> please, Drop the comments down below. Share all that knowledge so we're constantly helping each other. And uh, I mean, that's what, we're, that's what we're here for, right? All right, everybody, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something. If you did, as always, do me a favor, share the video, like the video, and subscribe to this channel if you've not done so already. And until next time, everyone, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you all again real soon. just right off the bat it is early morning and there's a bird right up there in that tree that just will not shut up so <laughs> just warning you i apologize but at the same time i really don't mind the sounds of birds I, but at the same time i don't really mind the sound of birds <laughs> but i know it can be distracting in a video so thought i'd warn you uh, you can also use bt spray if you want to again that's a chemical it will what is that? Okay, the next one I want to talk about are spider mites. Now, I've been hit with these, I think, twice in four years. <laughs> Sorry. The real pretty bird over there. Totally squirreled me. All right.